Yeah, I, I, just so he's comfortable. That's the main thing. You look great. Okay. Are we rolling? We're rolling. All right. Well, William Holden, nice to see you again. And particularly uh, here at the Beverly Hills Hotel, you know, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> no, I have. Uh, now that I look around, I, I haven't seen this place in about 40 years. But, uh, I mean, this area. But, uh, very nice. In SOB, you're playing a director. Uh huh. Have you ever played a movie director before? No, I don't think I. Uh, not a movie director. I, I played a stage director in the country at the time. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, was there any particular person or uh, several people, perhaps, who formed the composite of your character in SOB? Well, it is a composite character, but I was reminded Bob Preston this morning was saying, you know, I think that the, the character of the director was, uh, um, I forget, he mentioned somebody, an old-time director. And it's, uh, you know, everybody is going to interpret it in different ways. It's certainly not Frank Capra, and it's not uh, William Wilder or any. It's just uh, it's all Hollywood. I think we might be getting just, uh, yeah. Uh, well, there we go. There we go. Okay, this is this is live on tape television, folks, in case you're wondering. <laughs> okay, if we were making a movie, we'd say cut and we'd start over again, but we're not doing that. Uh, Bill, this, uh, this movie, there's a lot of brouhaha about it. Now, when you read the script and when you were making it, in your mind, did you say, hey, Holden, this is really going to open a can of worms and going to really get everybody stirred up in Hollywood? No, I accepted it on the basis that uh, it's a story. You used the background of Hollywood. It could have been uh, General Motors. It could have been TV. As a few years ago, we did a picture called Network, which was satirical about uh, uh, television. Uh, no, I accepted it on the basis that it was a story that took place in Hollywood. It was not to cause any furor or uproar, just making a good film. And fortunately, we had just one of the best casts. Uh, we all became, uh, Blake has a remarkable sort of talent and ability of bringing everybody together and making them feel that whatever their contribution is, whether they're interpreters or creative people, that they're doing a hell of a job. And uh, we all met uh, sort of uh, a few days before we started. And, Richard Mulligan and uh, Bob Preston, and a lot of old-time friends, hadn't seen each other for a long time. And we stayed that way all during the production. It's just a great kind of period of time for all of us. The Hollywood community is down on the picture. I think that that's a generalization we can make. Does that bother you at all? Uh, no, it doesn't bother me, but I don't think the community is down. You don't? Well, you have to, can, what is, does the community consist of, whether it's the executive producers, studios, uh, production or distribution as against the real community which are the writers, directors, actors, producers that work for I, I don't think the community is down on it at all. Uh, but I haven't had any reaction to it. They've, everyone has enjoyed it and said oh, there's truth, <laughs> a lot of truth in it. Indeed. It's comedic but it's truth. Yeah. And the truth hurts and so a lot of people are going to get uptight about that, I'm sure. Oh, it's not, it's, uh, I don't think it's that important. Network, of course, the TV industry, the same way when oh, the yeah. picture came out, but you survived that, didn't you? Well, it was certainly, because, again, you're dealing with basic truth, whether it's satire or comedy, it's basically the truth uh, that goes on. Of course, Network, the ending of Network was to the extreme, and I guess you might consider that when we put Richard Mulligan in that boat and had that Viking funeral for him. It, that's extreme, but that's all part of, of storytelling, of fantasy, you think. Yeah, we all know, of course, your great love uh, for Africa and, and wildlife and conservation and all that. I wonder, was that just something you kind of accidentally got into, or was it something that was just always there in your life, maybe from the time you were a child? It must have been, because uh, when, when I found that particular interest, uh, uh, although I had gone to Africa in 1958 to, to on a hunting safari, and then I realized that the animal population of certain species were endangered, I, I became interested in conservation. So, I don't know, perhaps from the first day that I took the Boy Scouts oath or whatever it was that got me interested in conservation, it, it certainly was evident from the first moment that I hit Africa, and I, I, I find an, an immense degree of satisfaction and gratification and, and being able to contribute something to conservation of wildlife and uh, involve myself in it. 
What were you doing in Dallas-Fort Worth recently uh, at the Wildlife Park? Oh, well, the International Wildlife Park has 30 Arabian oryx, and we were trying to work out an exchange where we would send them some grevy from the northern frontier district of Kenya to the park, and we in turn would take the Arabian oryx for a period of rehabilitation in Africa and then send them back to the to an Arab uh, country. And uh, Oman has made a bid for this, and they're setting up... A, a reserve and a preserve for these animals. Uh, they're terribly endangered. Uh, there are only 300 in the world. And, uh, we have 10% of them that we can send back to uh, Oman. And uh, hopefully that will work out this next spring. Bill, is this conservation work in any sense at all a business with you? In other words, I mean, dollars and cents involved or? No, no. Uh, uh, it's a labor of love. Uh, my partners and I were just, we've, oh, well, listen, uh, we'd love to break even, but it's certainly not done with the intent to capitalize in any sense on it. So it's, not a, it's not a profit-making kind of venture. I mean, if we wanted to make profit, we'd buy IT&T or IBM or some stock and sit back and get whatever it came back. No, this is, this is the involvement of, of uh, your concern, your interest, and uh, in my case, the avocational interest that I have. And I, as I say, I get a great deal of satisfaction from just doing it. The interest that is paid to you is a way of life. And I'm sure also that it is a great relief and catharsis to go look at the oh. animals when show business gets a little oh. tough, huh? That's true. Okay. That's true. You get away Bill, from it. Delightful to see you again. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.